So, Dr. Taylor, so you recently published the results of a clinical trial on the impact of creatine on Alzheimer's disease. So it would be great if we could have a look at what you found and some of the implications from the results. But to start with, can you provide some background on creatine and the brain? So what in, why initiate the study for creatine? What, sort of what preclinical data do we have that supports that creatine would help with the brain? Yeah, so what we know about aging and Alzheimer's disease is that uh, brain energy metabolism as a normal part of aging usually decreases compared to younger adults. Um, and then when we uh, take Alzheimer's disease or other some of these other related dementias, um, brain energy metabolism is far worse than you would expect it to be as related to normal aging. And so when you think about your brain, your brain requires lots and lots of energy in order to do its functions. Um, and so if we, if we have changes to where the brain can't use energy quite as well, then that can cause a really big issue, sort of a crisis um, with regard to making sure we have plenty of energy to do the things that it needs to do, like thinking and uh, memory, those types of things. Um, so with that, we know that there's a lot of different things that are really important for brain energy metabolism. Um, and one of those is creatine. So creatine is a molecule that we make in our body, um, and it sort of serves as a uh, chaperone or a carrier for energy. Um, it stores energy in uh, places like muscle and organs and in the brain. Um, and uh, so it's a really, really important part of this, um, of making sure that the brain has plenty of energy to perform its functions. And we have some indications that there are changes in the way that creatine is uh, made in the brain and um, how it might function in the brain um, in disease states like Alzheimer's disease. So um, the idea here is that there is a brain energy metabolism issue, creatine is important for it, and creatine may be impacted by the disease. So it serves as a really interesting um, target to try and improve in Alzheimer's. Um, and so that's really the main premise here is we, we really want to try to, and that's what a lot of my research focuses on, is how can we improve brain energy metabolism to either try and optimize aging, prevent Alzheimer's disease, and also possibly treat Alzheimer's disease. Um, so we've been, that's our, kind of our nutritional approach, and, and there, there are several ways we can try to get at that, and creatine just happens to be one of those. So creatine in muscles so my understanding is like when i'm not doing anything when i'm relaxed i'm not using much creatine but then i i lift a weight right and i need emergency i, I need some extra energy so i my muscle uses creatine to support the atp does the brain work the same way i mean how does how does my how does kind of the analog of me lifting something heavy work for neurons yeah, I mean, there are times that neurons have more demand than others, um, and it's so it's it's very likely that creatine is sort of that buffer that provides that really quick energy to those neurons. Um, but it also serves as this really important storage form of energy uh, in the brain, where it's probably also working. I would imagine it's probably working quite a bit uh, because our brain. Uh, it's really interesting. Our brain is such a small organ relative to the rest of our bodies, but it uses up 20% of the energy that our whole body makes. So it's like, it's really using energy all the time. Um, and its demand is high all the time. So I would actually imagine that creatine is probably working quite a bit in the brain uh, in providing those, those quick, like replenishing ATP and making sure that we um, that we meet that demand as it's needed. But it is true. There would be, there would be times when you're thinking and uh, have a cognitive demand that your your energy uptake would be um, higher at those points in time um, and across different regions. So like different regions of your brain or like our brain is not one big organ that functions, you know, in this very homogenous way. It, there's a lot of regions that make up the brain and they have specific demand um, for cognitive tasks that you're performing. Um, and so that that creatine would ultimately allow that that um, 
that ATP to be replenished or those phosphates to be provided for energy um, in those regions as it's needed. So it serves a really important role um, in probably in just regular, just baseline metabolism, but also, um, also for uh, increased cognitive demand. Mm -hmm.